welcome to video tutorial one of the Albatross Flight Dynamics Lab. Okay, so we're assuming that you're at a university computer with Unity on it, or you have your own computer which you've installed Unity. Uh, and our first job uh, is to fire up the Unity Hub. So this application is where you manage all your projects and create new ones. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is make sure that Unity is saving projects where we want Unity to save it. So if you click on the gear icon up here in Preferences, and you can select a location where your projects are going to be saved. So it's really important you choose a sensible place that you know where it is and you can find it. And if it's on a university managed machine, you need to make sure it's saved somewhere that uh, within your data space so that it, it, you retain it. Okay, so set up where you want to save it. I'm saving mine on the desktop for now because that's convenient. Leave it at that. And what we have to do now is create a new project. So click on New Project. So the defaults are pretty good. Uh, we leave it on 3D as our um, structure for the project. And the thing we need to choose here is uh, the name of the project. So call it something sensible. And so I'm going to call it Flight Dynamics Lab version 1. OK, and the other thing to check here is what version of the editor it's using. Um, so I'm using 2021 um, with some other points after it. And LTS stands for Long Term Service. So as long as you're using a recent version of Unity, it doesn't actually matter particularly what you use. Uh, but just bear in mind, nothing is backwardly compatible. So if you if you go and use it on a machine with a um, later version of uh, an earlier version of Unity, it won't work. Uh, so just check out what you're going to use. Okay, then we click on Create Project, and this will wear away for a bit. It's got to do quite a lot of work in the background setting it up. Um, depending on how fast your computer is, this can take anywhere between one minute and ten minutes. So you've just got to be patient as it brings together all the files it needs to run your project. Uh, if your computer is a little bit it's a bit slow, you may have to go and make a cup of tea or walk around the block or something while it's doing this. Okay, there we go. It's set the project up for me. That took about a um, couple of minutes on my computer. And what we're going to do now is just have a look around, see what we've got in this scene as it starts. So this is an empty project. And we've got various different windows with things going on it. On the left here is the hierarchy uh, window. And this at the moment has just got a camera in it and a light. Um, and when you click on one of these, you can see it highlighted in the scene. And on the right hand side here, we've got the inspector window. And when you click on something, this inspector brings up the things that you can change with the things you've with the thing you've highlighted. So with this one, we've got a camera so we can do things, change the background, we can change how much it zooms in and so on. And if we clicked on the light, we could change its brightness and direction. Uh, so a lot of your interaction with the world that you're creating will be through the uh, inspector window here. The other windows you've got are down at the bottom here, if you're using the default setup. Um, we've got a project view, which is the little bit like your file manager. So um, assets is where all your files are going to be, packages are the extra things you install, um, and you can navigate this through this in the way you'd expect to in a sort of file manager application. So if we look in assets and then open scenes, there's one scene here at the moment called sample scene. Um, sometimes it's quite hard to read what's going on there. You can zoom in and out of these, so if you make it smaller you can read the whole thing. Okay, and then the last window, which may be useful, depending on what you're doing, the console, basically, if any error messages come up, it will come up in this uh, window here. So sometimes that's useful. For, if something's not going right, you can have a look in here and there'll be some messages. Okay, great. So that's the basic layout of the Unity workspace. We now go up to Assets and Import Package, Custom Package. And then you have to navigate to where you've downloaded the uh, Unity package from Blackboard or wherever you got it from. Uh, in my case, it's in Downloads, and your version might be slightly different, but this is the one I'm using. So I'm going to click on that, click Open. It'll read the package to see what's in it. And there we go, it's found all these new things it's going to bring in. The little green thing says they're all new because you haven't got any of those in your project yet. And so quite simply, we want all of those, so we're just going to click Import. 
And once again, depending on the speed of your machine, this may take a anywhere between one minute and five minutes uh, as, it, as it brings everything in, getting everything ready. Once you've done this once, you don't have to do it again uh, and everything is um, much, much faster after this. Uh, so you may have to be patient while it gets on with its job. Okay, so success, we've um, imported our um, Flight Dynamics Lab package. Um, but actually, if we look on here, we've got a, an error here on here. If we look on console, type of namespace, in input action could not be found. And that's fine. We were expecting that because what we need to do is add another package which does the input management. And that allows us to control our aircraft through the keyboard or an Xbox controller or a PlayStation controller. Um, so often with these things, you have to add different packages uh, to get different functionality you need. And this time, because it's a standard package, we're going to get it straight from Unity. And to do that, we're going to go to Window and then Package Manager. And then at the top here, we're going to select from Unity, so from the Unity registry. Um, and then we're going to search for Input System. And it's found it as soon as I've typed Input System. Um, I've already downloaded it before, so it's found it. You may have to download it and then and install it, but I'm just going to go ahead and just click install. Okay, so we get a little warning here with something not terribly intelligible, but the bottom line is we need to restart the editor to make sure that our inputs are connected correctly. Um, so we just click yes, and it just restarts itself. Okay, so it's done that. So we're now all set up, ready to go. And if you navigate to the scenes directory here, you'll see there's now a scene called Flight Dynamics Lab Main Scene. And if we double click on that, it'll open up the Flight Dynamics Lab Scene. Okay, so it's appeared there. And in our scene window here, we've got a slightly, um, and we've got a view, a view of a hangar. We can't really see what's going on. So the, the first thing you need to do in terms of navigation is better find the aircraft, depending on where it is. And the way to do that is if you go into your hierarchy view, and if you just double click on the aircraft, um, the uh, window will, will zoom out or move around until you can see it. Okay, and so if I want to go closer, I can move in and out with my wheelie mouse wheelie button on the mouse so if i'm zooming in and out i can get closer i can get close to our aircraft but there's some rather annoying icons everywhere and those are gizmo icons and they're too big for what we want and so i'm going to go up to this little button here and i can turn them all off by clicking that or if i want to see some of them i can just take them select them um, individually so in fact if i turn off 3d icons i can see some of the other stuff in there uh, but not but the big ones have gone. Okay, so this is our aircraft. Um, and in terms of navigating around it, the most useful uh, navigation um, input that you can do is using the left mouse button and Alt held at the same time allows you to orbit round. So I've got the Alt, I've got the um, Alt button uh, pressed on the keyboard with my thumb, and I'm moving the uh, the view with my uh, left mouse button. So I can move in and out, and I can orbit round, and that's usually enough to find everything you need to. So we've got our aircraft sitting in front of us there, um, and I've clicked on the floor in the hangar, actually, so that's opened all those up. So if I don't want to see any of those, I'm going to do that. And I, I'm actually going to click Do Not Touch on the hanger. So now if I click it, it doesn't do anything. Or it doesn't select it anyway. OK, um, so what have we got here? Uh, we have got a our center of gravity. Um, as from Flight Dynamics point of view, knowing where your center of gravity is really important. And actually, I can select that. If I click on it once, it clicks a shell of the aircraft. If I click on it again, it actually finds the center of gravity, and so it's highlighted it there. Um, so this will come in a later tutorial, but if you want to move the center of gravity, it's simple as once you've got it selected, you can drag it backwards and forwards. Um, so that's a pretty handy thing to be able to do in simulation. Other things you need to better um, 
to do is sometimes you need to be able to look at a precise sort of view of the aircraft to, to orientate things. At the moment we're in a perspective view, um, but if you click on one of these standard views here and then click on the face of this little compass icon, it makes it jump to orthographic view. So now we're looking at it directly on. So when you're moving around the center of gravity or looking at control positions, you can see them exactly. And then if you click on the other aspects of this compass icon, so we're now looking at it sideways on, so you can see exactly where we are. So if you're moving the CG around, um, you can position it precisely in that plane. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom out and once you've uh, done your job in the isometric view, it's sometimes a bit confusing looking at the real world like that. So you can get back to the um, uh, perspective view by clicking that and there you go, you've got your view. Okay, so you've seen how to set up a new Unity project, uh, import the packages you need for the Flight Dynamics Lab and the input system. Uh, for Unity and you've seen how the different windows or the different aspects of the user interface are used to interact with your model and you've seen how you can use the keyboard and mouse to navigate your way around the scene. Uh, in the next video we'll be looking at how you run experiments on your aircraft to try and understand its flight dynamic behaviour.